This kid is a gamer. He's a baller. He's a slave maker and a shot caller. In case you didn't know, I got keyboard. He shattered the mold. And all he does is win. All, all, all he does is win. Game. Listen. I got keyboard. He shattered the mold. And all he does is win. All, 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 he, all he does is unleash. Tell him to go. Let him go. It's time. Turn him loose. Let him play. Let him play. Let him play. Let him play. keep that the thought that that could be the last time we see that that, that would break my come heart. on when he wins the super bowl in jackson well, yeah well, of course then we would bring it back yeah. uh hey look nothing happens in the denver sports world without woody page having a strong opinion on it and uh, our old friend and good friend woody is back with us again now to talk about the news out of denver that peyton manning is signed sealed and delivered now five years 96 million adam Schefter is reporting the terms of the contract Woody, you were on with us yesterday and it was immediately after the news broke now you've had 24 hours to digest it and analyze it and talk to folks about it what's your take on the move well i think the most important thing is that we just learned that uh Skibelis is a one-hit wonder that, that <laughs> record goes away he won't have a follow-up because i don't think he'll do a manning rap song uh no you know, i think about it you, you have to get tebow out of town and there are questions here people say oh he can sit behind he can sit behind manning and learn from Baum. he's not going to sit behind manning and learn anything they're two di totally different quarterbacks he can't be here the circus would just keep its tent up he's got to go somewhere he can play and I got some specific ideas about that. And I thought I just heard the most ludicrous garbage I've ever heard. <laughs> and it didn't come out of Skip's mouth. It came out of whoever you brought in to try and replace me. And that was, oh, he can't handle the pressure in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, he didn't want a circus in Tennessee. Well, guess what? There's always going to be a circus no matter where he goes. There's going to be pressure. This guy's played two Super Bowls. He's been under more pressure than... Uh, practically any quarterback in the history of the league, and he's handling it all. It, ha it had nothing to do with being afraid of San Francisco. He probably wanted to stay away from Jim Harbaugh because Harbaugh wants to be the uh, controlling force there. He didn't want to go back to Tennessee. He's already been in Tennessee. He did that number. He didn't want to go to Miami because he didn't want to go on vacation. He wanted to come play <laughs> for a team where he can feel comfortable with John Elway. He and John Elway have walked in the same cleats. They have done the same thing. John Elway wants to do for Peyton Manning what he did for himself. That is, win a couple of Super Bowls on the way out. Go out on the field winning, not go out on your shield. Now, wait That's a second. I I, I'm hearing very mixed emotions from one Woodrow Page Jr. because last year you were Tebow's biggest supporter in Denver, but... As I remember, you graduated from the University of Tennessee. You're also a huge Peyton Manning fan. So now where do you stand? Well, I think you graduated from Vanderbilt. I don't know that you're the biggest Jay Cutler fan yes, I am. ever lived. <laughs> well, I know that. But the point is, where do I stand? I think the best thing in the world for Tim Tebow is to get out of town. That's where I stand. I still feel strongly that Tim Tebow is going to be a great quarterback in the National Football League. Now it's just got to be a place where it can be made to happen, and I'll give you a couple of places, and one is going to astound you, but why not go to Cleveland? Why don't the Cleveland Browns make a deal? Colt McCoy's not the solution there. They know it. Bring in Tebow. Go with that a Tebow offense, and I think Cleveland Browns become an, a, a reverent team rather than a reverent team I again. Agree. Or I would say, you're talking about pressure and people feeling it, why don't the 49ers bring in, and I haven't heard this mentioned I'm anywhere. scared. I, why don't they sign I just I did skip. it. I already yeah. did it. He I did said, it earlier. He said Cleveland and San Francisco, you're sounding an awful lot like your old friend, Woody. Well, uh, that's uh, for once uh, <laughs> minds that aren't so great think alike. But to me, those are the two places in NFL. So, Skip, I applaud and salute you yes. if you and I are on the same track I am. Yeah. Okay. Now, remember when I was there in December, 
You sold me hard. What's that? <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and you, your little you, wagon. Yeah you, you, yeah, you pulled your mic off. That was great. You sold me hard on the fact that you knew that John Elway at that point was completely sold on Tim Tebow. Did that change in the last three, four games? Well, let me ask you, Skip. You and I have had a long, illustrious life together and apart, and there have been on occasions that we've maybe had girlfriends or wives or whatever it might be, and we've traded a sure thing for romance. And the thing about it is that uh, uh, John Elway was comfortable with Tim Tebow in developing him. But when you have the opportunity to trade up and get a guy that's in a position just as you were, <clears throat> nobody in this league knows more about the position that Peyton Manning is wanting to go out as he does than John Elway. He was right there. He had to rehabilitate a torn biceps. He was a guy, you remember, Skip, that Dan Reeves wanted to get rid of. And, and in fact, uh, Indianapolis did get rid of Peyton Manning. John Elway was a guy who would lost Super Bowls and was going to go out and not have a good end to his career. They brought Mike Shanahan in, and I think the situation's not – the same, but they're very similar in a lot of different ways, and people say, well, he didn't want the pressure. There will be pressure in Denver. This is a big-time sports city. There will be pressure to follow Tebow. We had a poll in today's Denver Post that 54% of the people think this is a bad idea. Really? So there's still well, people in the... Oh, absolutely, and there are people who still believe in Tebow, and I guess I would say the people in Denver, if you believe in Tebow, you want him out of here. And as much as I, I like and have appreciated Elway and, and, and Tebow and their relationship, I want Tebow to get rid of, of, of Tebow to be gotten rid of. Yeah. Give him an opportunity to go do it somewhere else and prove that you're right and prove that I'm right. Yeah. And as I said, I think there are two possible places where he would be a perfect fit. Okay, late in Elway's career, under Shanahan, out of heaven fell Terrell Davis. What was it, the sixth round? So who's yes. going to be the Terrell Davis to save Peyton Manning at age 36, 7, and 8? Well, I think there are two possibilities already in place, and one would be Willis McGay. He's got still a year or two left in him, and he can run the football. I think they bring in Joseph Adai, yep. who played with Manning in Indianapolis and was a good third down back. No Sean Marino was a no-show Marino mm -hmm. here in Denver, and I think they will get rid of him. I think they will go out and use, instead of on a young quarterback, that they'll use one of their top two picks on a running back who will come out of college and be able to fit in here perfectly. When you put those three together, Skip, I think that in McGahee and, and a die and a young, uh, solid uh, quarter, uh, running back out of college, that you've got a situation that will be comfortable enough for Manning and the running game and John Fox, who likes to run the football, but suddenly he's going to have to blow up his ideas offense once again for the second year in a row. Last year he had to shift to Tim Tebow and what that offense yep. was, and now he's got to go to the hurry up. And I think that that's being dismissed. Everybody's talking about, oh, he didn't want the pressure. He didn't want the circus. I'll tell you what he does want. He wants to be in altitude. He wants to be in a hurry up offense. Yep. And you guys both know they can wear down people here. Defenses come in here, and after a while, they're just gagging and wanting oxygen on the sidelines. And this is a perfect situation with a hurry-up offense. I've said that for years. Uh, coaches would not go to it. Uh, Shanahan did for a little bit with Cutler, and it was successful, and that's what I want to see them return to. You can't simulate that thin air in practice. Yeah, as, as long as the Denver de defense isn't gagging at the end of the game. Well, right? they'd have to get used to it. They, they live and practice there. One would think they would be more used to it. Woody, always entertaining, my friend. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Well, I'll see everybody back here every day. That's my understanding. I'll be here every day. That's it. That's needs, exactly right. He yeah. needs me as much as I need Skip, and uh, thanks, Jay. Woody, you know we love you. We're taking a break. On the other